Mariana Santa Barbara, and I'm honored to be at the Women's of Distinction event. My friend Ariana Santa uh, Schultz is with me today, and I'm proud to introduce my father and your assemblyman, Angelo Santa Barbara. Okay, thank you. That was uh, my daughter and her friend uh, Ariana from uh, Shawmont. And uh, they're here to just to help me kick off the show. Uh, but I want to welcome everybody to the 2017 uh, Women of Distinction Awards. Uh, this is the fifth year we're doing these, uh, these uh, awards uh, for every year that I've been in the State Assembly. Uh, this is the first time uh, that we're doing it here uh, on Open Stage Media and we're live streaming right now, so it's broadcasting. Uh, so those of you that have Facebook or are online, you can watch it. Yeah, you can watch it. You can watch it happen, Aaron. And uh, I thought this would be a good idea because uh, we can share uh, the stories instead of just having uh, uh, expanding it out to our entire community because a lot of the work that you're doing is affecting the community. And they can't always make these events, but it's important that we talk about uh, uh, what we're celebrating here today. Uh, so I want to thank everybody for, uh, for being here. Uh, and uh, I want to thank all friends and family. Uh, it's great to do this. Uh, as a first time here. Uh, I do want to welcome all of our, uh, our honorees uh, this year. We have uh, Betty Harper. Let's give her a round of applause. Aaron Musto. Carmel Patrick. Dr. Vicky Ramos. Shireen Rivera. And Emily Wiley Olen. So these are uh, these are these are just an amazing uh, group of women. Uh, they're remarkable. Uh, they they've done uh, so much for their community, and they do it because they want to improve our community. They want to do good things for for families and for children. Uh, and it's only uh, fitting that we are here today uh, to recognize them. Uh, so with that, uh, we are going to, uh, we're, still, we're still good, Zeb, we're live streaming. Okay, we're still good. Uh, we are gonna welcome up our first guest, who is uh, Carmel Patrick. Carmel. We're gonna hook you up right here. Okay. And uh, actually, I think this is, that one's mine, right? Yes. Okay, this yes. one's yours. Okay. Okay. I hear a little feedback, so I click. So, Carell, thanks for being on the show. I hear a little bit of feedback. Is that? Yeah. Okay, who's gonna fix that in a second? So, Carmel, you're uh, we've uh, we've known each other for a long time. A long time. <laughs> and you've been doing a lot of work in the community, and that's why uh, this year uh, we wanted to honor you with this uh, women with the Women of Distinction Award. Uh, and I think that. Uh, uh, well, you can tell your you can tell your own story, but looking at your resume, uh, thirty years of experience—that's a very long time. Yeah, I'm getting uh, old. I'm getting old, Dan. <laughs> you, you've done so much in this connected area. Let's start with your with your with some some of the stuff on your. I know you're with the museum now. Yes. Uh, but before that, you were actually with the museum when it was called something different. Let's talk about that. Okay, so I went to work at the Schenectady Museum and Suits Beaker Planetarium in 2007. So that was my first experience uh, being here in Schenectady and I felt immediately welcomed. It's been an incredible experience for these last 10 years really becoming a part of this community, both with my work and also my volunteer service. And at that time, the museum was really making its transition um, into becoming a hands-on science center where we were really striving to teach kids about science, technology, engineering, and math. And that's when we met yep, because that's right. you were an engi you are an engineer yep. and you came in and started to help us with some of our, our programming in, in your role as an engineer. Yeah. And uh, I think what's, what's so special about the work that you're doing is uh, it is inspiring children. Uh, and as engineers, that's part of our job too, is yes. to, to uh, find the future engineers of America. And a museum does that so well. And there's really nothing like it, uh, not just in Schenectady, but the surrounding region, right? This Absolutely. is very unique. Absolutely, we are sort of the premier science center um, in a very broad geographic region. Last year we had about 110,000 people that came through our doors to experience our exhibits and take our classes and summer camps or the outreach that we also do in schools or at community organizations. So it's really important just because here in Tech Valley, obviously our employers are looking for that really skilled workforce and 
kids really need to be inspired to go into these kinds of uh, subject areas. So I think everything that we do, we're trying to m allow them to have fun while they're sort of sparking their creativity and sparking their imagination and teaching them to be problem solvers. So last night we had our invention convention, yep. the 19th year, and you know, Dr. Marshall Jones spoke about how he became an inventor and how he, he just got inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. And really the kids were sort of listening to him and understanding that they could grow up also and, and do what he has done to try to transform the world. So Carmel, what inspires, what inspires you? Why do you, why do you uh, want to be involved in the community? You had some time at, this, at the community college. Mm -hmm. Obviously, in, all my, in my travels, I see you a lot. <laughs> yes, so that yeah. means you're involved a lot, because I, I do travel in all parts of the community, and I, I, we do cross paths quite a bit. Mm -hmm. What inspires you? Why, why do you want to uh, be a part of the community? Mm -hmm. I've always felt um, throughout my life that where you live, you, we all have a responsibility to be trying to make sure that we're making our communities as positive as possible for as many people as possible. And I think in an urban area like Schenectady, there's a lot of folks um, who are rolling up their sleeves to really try to help transform our neighborhoods. And there's a lot of folks in our communities that um, are living in need. And I think, especially for me, because of my background in education, it's always for me been about youth. Um, and so those are the kinds of opportunities that I've really put my volunteer service behind. Um, right now, uh, I'm president of the Schenectady County Public Library Board of Trustees, that. and that is really a passion for me. I've always been uh, someone that loved libraries. I, since I was four years old, I've been a frequent uh, library goer. Uh, reading is a big part of my life. And I think that literacy is so important in really changing people's lives. And so whether it's children, uh, or whether it's adults and how families can get excited about about learning and about reading together. Reading can really set the course for your life because if you're a strong reader, you're going to probably do well academically. You're going to learn about things that are outside of our day-to-day -day experience um, and that'll also inspire you to, to go out there. So I think my parents, when I was growing up, uh, really Everyone in my family was serving our community back in Boston uh, in some way. You know, it was very focused around our church or around my parents were involved with the VFW or with the Sons of Italy, and they were always doing something, and that was their, their modeling to me, I think, in terms of what it means to be a part of a neighborhood. And, so. uh, and looking at your resume, I mean, uh, you're, not, you're on several boards, actually, and the Human Rights Commission you're involved with, uh, and you give lectures on nonprofit management, uh, so the, there's, 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 it's not just one board, there's a lot of extra, extra yes. besides your work at the museum, there's a lot of other things you do. I do. Uh, and a lot of it's on boards, but some of it's some of the things you do on your own, like lecture, giving lectures to... Well, that, y yes, um, but I think the other, the other organization that I'm most involved with right now is the Rotary Club of Schenectady. And again, for me, it sort of starts out because you want to get to know other people and, and it might be a professional reason that you start out into something like that. But now I have to say that these are really friends, right? I mean, I think that when you're involved with organizations, uh, any type of organization, you're going to yourself have that support, right? So you know that you're part of a family. Uh, you know that you're all going to come together. We've had over the last, you know, probably five or six weeks in our club, we've lost a member, uh, we've lost spouses of members, um, all just in the last few weeks, and everybody sort of comes together and you know cooks meals and and you know shares friendship and and has that group, and that's important for me. Like I just always want to feel like I'm part of that community in a real way. And, and I feel like just as our relationship uh, with the museum, it's much, it's it's beyond the museum, and I yes. feel like those, it's important to do that if you're going to be successful in an organization, take it beyond the organization and form those personal relationships, bonds, those connections. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think as the city has grown, and I said this a lot, the, the museum has grown with it. Yes. Uh, it has changed over time. Absolutely. As you said. And, and certainly, uh, I know there is a family within that uh, that works together. Uh, how does how important is that to have that sense of uh, a trusted family at the, at the place you work? Oh yeah, I mean that's really important. I have to actually say, so in the ten years, right, that I've been here, 
all of this has happened downtown. I mean, yeah, none this, of this was here. The set that uh, we're on right it, now. Exactly. <laughs> so um, it's really been fun to watch the down, the transformation here of downtown and the economic transformation of Schenectady. And the museum, I think, has played a role in that. I think that we have established ourselves as a place to be, a place to come, a place to learn, a place to have fun. And I think um, within our museum, certainly within our board of trustees, we have just some really committed people that um, are always volunteering with us. And then our, our employee group, I mean, if that's yeah. what you're saying, I mean, I think we, we have a very small team. We only have about uh, 14 of us full time and, you know, pulling off everything that we pull off. So you do, you kind of go outside of your own job description and, and you become friends. We're having a wedding shower at someone's home on, on Sunday for one of our younger colleagues. I am, of course, one of the really older people uh, at the museum. Everybody else that I work with is decades younger than me, but it's a lot of fun. They keep me on my toes. They teach me a lot of new things, and I think that's important as well. Yeah, and I, I think that uh, the one thing I can take away uh, what I, from the museum every time is it is about inclusion. It is. Uh, it is. Everybody is welcome. Uh, nobody's left out. Absolutely. Uh, and I think it's very special. And I know uh, you have a lot of supporters because it is. It's not just a. It's not just a. I think it has turned into a look. Look at museum, uh, to a touch and feel. And oh, be, absolutely. And be a part and and play with things in there and find out how they work. Mm -hmm. uh, and that transformation I think happened while you were there. Yes, it has. And I think that that, you know, for us, we really feel that the way that people learn best is if they are actually doing things. And that's the point of all of our exhibits now. So you're getting this chance to sort of manipulate uh, all sorts of interactive exhibits. And through that, you're going to sort of ask questions and say, well, why is this working this way? And if I do this, how does that, how does that make it different? So yeah, that's a big part of, of what we're there for. And uh, so now we, uh now that you've uh, found a home, what do you see for the future? Yeah, I think that um, here in Schenectady, and my husband and I actually moved to Schenectady, bought a home right near Schenectady High School uh, about seven years ago. And um, I see, for me, what I think is going to be important over the next several years is this remarkable transformation of downtown needs to happen in our neighborhoods, needs to happen uh, on Eastern Avenue, needs to happen in Mount Pleasant, needs to keep um, having these neighborhoods grow and prosper so that more people um, will come here, want to be in our school system, uh, want to live in our neighborhoods. So um, with the library, for example, you know, we're, we have a project underway where we're hoping to be able to build a new branch library I in heard. Mount Pleasant. And you know, we know from the folks that are supporting us in Mount Pleasant that they feel that the library is sort of the heart and center of that community and uh, they're, they're all about trying to help us make that branch bigger and better so that we can do more programming there. Uh, so, so that's, you know, we're really excited about that. But I think, you know, the same spirit and enthusiasm that uh, has happened here is branching out into into these other places and I think that's really important I mean folks that have lived here way longer than me that grew up here um, are really um, interested in seeing their neighborhoods grow and prosper and and that their kids stay safe and their kids are healthy uh, and their families are, are, are healthy so I think that's that's what has to happen next here and I think the, the partnerships that you talk about uh, you don't always see them uh, museum library neighborhood you know boys it's, and it's girls club boys and girls, girls so inc i mean it all is like we have to all just keep and i feel like uh you're sort of that driving force of the museum but you have these connections to the library and to these other groups uh and they may not be you know relationships that you see all the time but yeah it's happening here and i think everybody if, if there's a project or something to be done everybody's on board even if it's a development project you know the museum's kind of a part of that oh yeah, yeah. absolutely i think that you know again we're trying to uh, do a project in Vail Park, for example. So we're trying to, you know, ex say to people, look at this incredible natural habitat that's right in the middle of, of an urban setting, and we're trying to bring more attention to that. The city has reactivated the Vail Park Task Force, um, and we've been running some special events there, uh, trying to do some, you know, family movie nights for the neighborhood, or we had a weenie roast last summer that we're going to repeat, because we're trying to get all these folks that are working down here to see that they could just walk, you know, for six minutes and, and come in and be able to, you know, be in this beautiful place. So. You know, we, we're every day when I go by there now. You know, we've we've done some different things with the playground equipment. I see kids and families in there, and it really, 
you know, makes me feel good that, that people are understanding that, the, that there is a place to go, you know? You are making a difference in our community, and I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to recognize you today. Thank you so much. It's really an honor for me, and, so I appreciate uh, well, it. Well, I, I, I think you've done so much uh, uh, in, in the Schenectady area. You've done so much for the museum. You've made it a part of our community. Uh, you've you. certainly helped form these partnerships, and that helps everybody, and that really makes a difference in people's lives, and that's what these awards are about. So I'm very pleased to, uh, to present you with uh, our citation. Uh, recognizing you uh, for this Thanks, year's, Angelo. Uh, That's so sweet. Uh, Thank you. Pause for a quick photo Thank here. you. Thank you. Oh, one more here. You got it? Okay. okay. Thank you <laughs> right. so much. Really. Congratulations. Let's hear it from Carmel Patrick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're going to unhook you there. And, uh, yeah, we'll leave it the chair. Okay, that was so sweet of you. Thank you. I think I know you have to go, but okay, we'll, yes. we'll see you soon. All right, okay. take care. Thank All right. you. Oh, move it up. Okay, they're telling me to move it up. They can't hear me good. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you, Carmel. Okay, our, our, next, uh, our next honoree is Emily Wiley Aulet. Welcome her up. Hug everybody because I know everybody. So. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Oh, thank you. We're gonna hook you up right here. Where's this go? Right up. Yeah, I think up there. They'll tell us if they can hear. How's that? That's good. I think it's good. I think it's good. Okay. okay. Well, welcome, Emily. Hi. Thank you. So we see each other on Facebook more a lot uh, a lot lately. Yes. Uh, it's because you've been so active. Yes. And uh, I'm very pleased to uh, recognize uh, you've been doing so much for as long as I've known you. Uh, and you're involved in so many things. Uh, and uh, the Emily Wiley Foundation, when I first Willie. heard about it. Uh, Emily Willie Foundation. Emily Willie Foundation. Yes, Willie, I keep, yes, <laughs> sorry. It's okay. Uh, and uh, you, you formed that uh, when I first met you. I think you were in, in the midst of forming that. And, uh, and it, was, it was in my district office. Yep. We started to find out a little more about it. Uh, but then, as it turns out, you started doing more and more with it. Yeah. And uh, the breakfast with Santa that we just had. Yeah, that was really uh, great. And uh, you can tell us a little bit about that. But there's some other programs, too, some reading programs and some other things involved. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk about your foundation, why you formed it, uh, and what, what inspired you to do it. Uh, well, I always knew that I wanted to make my mark on the world somehow. And I I grew up in Schenectady for the most part. And I looked around and I said, wow, how can I give back and make this a better place? Um, you know, you never know what tomorrow will bring, and at that point in my life, I thought maybe tomorrow might not come. So I said, let me make my mark today, and I started a very small school supply drive. I think we gathered about 500 school supplies, and at the time, I was working at Yates Elementary School, so I was like, oh, I'll bring them there. Kids need school supplies there, and then it grew. <laughs> People all over the place wanted school supplies. I realized how much they need them, so we grew from... 500 school supplies only to last year 575 kids getting every supply that they needed filled in their backpacks not just ones that were given out um, and then we grew into a keeping kids warm drive where we do hats gloves scarves scarves coats and that, yeah. blankets and uh, those have benefited many organizations the YWCA SCAP uh, local families just in the Mont Pleasant Hamilton Hill area uh, then we've been doing the holiday toy drive, which you know about, and I had this idea of a winter wonderland, and this year, so many great people helped me pull it off with the Breakfast with Santa event at Lincoln. That was a very nice event, and um, you know, my, my son was able to attend. Yes, that was very exciting. And, 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 you know, everybody was welcome there, mm -hmm. and uh, even children with special needs, you made, a, you made special accommodations for I them. I did. Uh, which means a lot to a lot of families, so that's very special as well. Uh, and uh, your motto, let's talk about your motto. Uh, creating a brighter, a, bright, a brighter future one youth at a time. Yes, I think that it absolutely takes a village to raise a child and I think that you have to focus on that, um, especially in my neighborhood of Mont Pleasant and then the Hamilton Hill area. A lot of our youth don't realize that they're valued because nobody shows them that. So I think if we take the initiative to tell them that they're valued and not just tell them but show them by being involved to make sure that their education is successful they have the tools if you wake up in the morning and you have the tools you need to go to school you're gonna want to go you know if you have if you have the clothes you need we recently had um, Long Pond Apartments in Rotterdam they did a spring cleaning event and 530 people benefited from clothes and if you give people the tools they need they'll be successful they'll want to go out you know 
and uh, I do a lot of work with so many organizations in the Mottles and Hamilton Hill area. I heard you talk about the library with Carmel yeah. and such, and I think uh, my biggest push for things is the Mount Pleasant Branch Library expanding, getting rid of the other things that are up there, as well as uh, Miracle on Craig Street. I think that's what our our community needs, and yeah, we and need it, somewhere for our kids to go. And it's, it's great to see that people are stepping up to do yep. things for their neighborhoods, and you know, yeah, Carmel did mention neighborhoods, yep. uh, and people are focusing on that, but as soon as the need is there, yes. people like yourself are stepping up and making a difference. Yeah, it's really great to think that we're going to be able to have a space soon where we can have these things, you know, we can have events where you don't have to rent out space, and you know, kids can just feel like they can go there when they don't think they have anybody else in the world, they'll like, oh, Emily will be there, or Rosa will be there, Damani will be there, so yeah. it's, it's exciting. Now you're you you're very you're very close with your family. I know they're I here. I am. They're over and, there. Uh, yeah. Okay. And give a little wave. Yeah. Hi guys. <laughs> and uh, I know I was at your wedding, and I, I know you, you were. Just, congratulations. Just Thank recently you. got married. And yes. You have, uh, uh, you have a wonderful children, and it's, it, you talk about your connection with them, and how it inspires you to do more. Yeah, I want um, you know I want them to grow up and understand that you have to give back in order to be blessed in life. You have to be a blessing to others. Um, you know, my son Gianni, he's three and a half, and he thinks that, you know, we live in a mansion and, and he has everything in the world. And I always want him to feel that way. And all of my, my school supply drives, my toy drives, he helps me organize everything. Um, this year for the toy drive and our Breakfast Sands event, we were in the kitchen organizing all the toys. And he's like, Mommy, and he brings out all of his toys. And I'm like, What are you doing? And he goes, And I need to give my bed to the kids that don't have much. And, I knew right there, like, I'm really doing a good job, you know? Every day as a mom, you wake up and you're like, oh, Lord, and, did and you I, just see what he did? I must not be doing a good job, but and I see, that I, moment right there. I see a lot of the pictures on Facebook, and they're precious. Uh, but what you're saying is, 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 is sort of, uh, generationally, I think we're seeing more of this, right? Is, are you seeing, we're just seeing more yeah. of people wanting to get involved? In yeah, definitely. I, um, a lot of people that are from my generation and even younger, you know, everybody said we're the lost generation, we're no good, but I see so much, so much potential and so much beauty in all the things that everybody's doing. And there's so many organizations doing so many things and the most important thing is crossing over and everybody coming together because we all have common goals and if we put it together, we can make a bigger impact with everybody. That's well said, that's well said. Yeah. And so what do you see for the future? Um, I'm actually, this weekend we'll be painting, um, have you heard of Free Little Libraries? They have one over at Lincoln Community School. It's basically a free little library where people can go and take books and leave books. They're very, very expensive, so I put my own twist on it, and I'm building my own. Um, and I'm going to go to local businesses and see who would like to sponsor them. They're about $75 to make to get all the supplies. And then I'm going to see where I can put them. I want to put them near Jerry Burrell, Orchard Park, in front of my house. And that way, you know, we have libraries, but everybody can't get to them, and I want people reading is so important and I want it to be accessible to the youth in the community even the adults in the community a lot of our adults don't know how to read but they'll never admit it out loud so I think if you can have books that are available for people to learn to read and read with their children it'll be very successful and also summer reading program at the summer free reading, yeah. Yeah, uh, the, summer, yeah the free lunch sites at the Schenectady inner city ministry puts on I've been working with um, the pastor from there and we're gonna set something up we're gonna be reading with the kids helping with schools projects and everything like that. Now it says your foundation has served over 5,000 children. In the last six, we're doing it based on school years because I started my first school supply drive on a school year. In the last six school years, over 5,000 kids have received different items from us and services. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. In Thank addition you. to that, you have a job that you work too. I do. I'm a supervisor at Janitronics, which is going very well. So um, I, I, I don't know where you find the time, but uh, <laughs> that's true dedication uh, to the you. community. To, you, you do your own job, then you come back and you're doing other jobs that you don't really have to do, but you want to do. Absolutely. And, and I think that's that's really what's making a difference. And uh, you, you, I know you are an inspiration to, to many because I see the comments on Facebook. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I, I, I feel like uh, you are inspiring the next generation of uh, Thank you. people to, to be involved in our community. And that's why we recognize you here today. I feel this is definitely an honor, especially with the rest of these honorees. I was like, oh my God. No, I, 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 I'm very pleased to, to have you uh, in this year's uh, group. And we. Uh, we, uh, of course, we're going to present you with a uh, uh, certificate from the State Assembly uh, that recognizes your honor here today. So I'm going to give this to you now. Thank we're you. Gonna... We're going to take a picture. Thank you. Thank you.
she had two. She had two cell phones going yeah. the same time. Oh, my mom <laughs> wants a picture That's too. Great. Oh yes, yes. Good. I never saw that before. You had two. <laughs> She's good with technology. Let's give Emily another round of applause. Thank you. Our next honoree is from uh, the city, the great city of Amsterdam. Dr. Vicki Ramos is here, superintendent of the school. We're just gonna hook you up right here. No, so uh, I, I call you Dr. Ramos, but I'm going to call you Vicky for the show. Absolutely, okay. <laughs> absolutely. Vicky, you uh, so you are the new superintendent, uh, fairly new, but you've been there for a little while. Uh, yeah. Of the Greater Amsterdam School District. Since August. Since August, and uh, we have had quite a few conversations about the school district and what your thoughts are. Uh, but one of the things we got to do uh, that really speaks a lot to why you're there and why you want to be there. First day of school, what did we do? We rode the bus together. We rode the bus. To, we rode the bus <laughs> we did. We into did. school. Into we school did. together. We did. It was important that they that um, first of all, thank you for being a great friend to us. I mean, you are truly a friend in education. You truly are. And um, a lot of people don't know this, but you were able to secure for us a bus so that we could carry our musical instruments. We thank you for that. So I got to Amsterdam, and the first thing I heard was everything you did to help our students. Smart scholars, you're at our activities, so thank you for that. But yeah, we rode the bus together because we wanted the kids to understand the importance of going to school every day, and we were promoting attendance, which is one of our goals. We need kids in school every day on time. And uh, we met at a school board meeting. We talked we a little bit about some of your priorities. Uh, but it's about kids. It uh, is about You're there kids. because you care about kids. Yeah. Uh, and that comes with inspiration. What inspires you to say, you know, this is something I want to do with my life? Well, I think that um, within, well, ever since I can remember, I always wanted to be a teacher, right? But you get that inspiration from, I think, your family. My mom was a kindergarten teacher, and she always loved and talked about how much she loved teaching until it came time to have kids. And, um, and they're wonderful parents, they're 85 years old right now. And my dad was a um, Vietnam and Korea veteran. He was in the armed forces for 26 years. And he always taught, about, taught us that it was very important to think of others and that education was number one. So I grew up with two parents that always talked about school. I love school. I would cry when they canceled school. So that was the type I was. My siblings would think, what's wrong with her? But I love school, and, and I just see my job as a teacher right now. Even though I'm a superintendent, I'm a teacher at heart because that is our job, is to allow others to learn and to teach every day and to every day be grateful for something that we've learned and we've helped someone else learn something. And I think going up, go, and you also go above and beyond the job, though. That, that's, that's what I see. Uh, and Thank that's, you. That's the reason why I wanted to include you uh, this you. year. You do go above and beyond, and we, we do cross paths a lot as well. We do. We, we cross paths at our kids' homes, right? We do. We do. Um, for me, when I first started in Amsterdam, it was very important not being from the city of Amsterdam to understand our community. And you understand your community when you can interact with people. And so I started my month of October of August doing home visits because I just wanted to hear from my parents. I wanted to hear from the kids. I just asked principals to randomly give me names of homes. And I called the parents first and asked them if I could have a conversation with them. And boy, Amsterdam is very caring. They're very open and they have huge hearts. And they welcomed me into their homes. I mean, how could, how could this not be great? To be in a place where they welcome you and we together can build a great district. It is, uh, big, big Heart is correct. That it, it, is, yes, it is a special a uh, place. And, and your marching band. Oh, fantastic. Known, known throughout the region. Fabulous, region's. fantastic. <laughs> right, marching rams. Yes, yes so we'll fantastic. Give them a little, give them a little shout out. Absolutely, absolutely. Going to, now you said you did house visits. Uh, I that did. Takes, that does take a, a lot of time and effort to do that. Uh, and it is above and beyond. But you still do it anyway. You do. And, and that's, that's something that I think is very special about the school because, you know, and, you know, I, I speak about the marching band. They are like a family. And I, I sense the school is the same way. The kids are close knit. and They, they are. Each other and way. we have great schools. I mean, we truly have wonderful schools in Amsterdam. And um, you never want to forget how difficult it is 
for a parent to raise children nowadays. And when, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate that my kids are now um, 24 and 22, but it, it's hard to raise children nowadays. We didn't have to worry about all these media outlets that parents have to worry nowadays about. And um, I think that I can never forget what it's like. That's why I love to visit schools all the time. You can't forget what it's like to teach every day because when you start to forget, you stop to impact. And one of the things I do have to mention, uh, it was very uh, meaningful to me, is that we were at the Crossroads Center for Children, had their event, we, we and were. you were there, and you were supporting that school. Uh, right. And that, 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 says, that says a lot because special education is part of this inclusion. It is, it is, it is. It's, it's, um, I saw a t-shirt one day that said, it's not about having a disability, it's about having the ability. I love that shirt. I mean, it's about finding the potential and the ability in every human being. And that's what, that's what we should be doing every day. Now tell us about your family. You have, uh, you have a son, right? You have a son. I have a son, Philip Michael. Yeah. He's right now a very poor professional baseball I see that. League. That's, that's... He is right now in spring training in Arizona. He's a pitcher. And my daughter that just graduated from Rutgers last, last Sunday and um, with um, a career in engineering. That's wonderful. Engineering is right up my alley, as it you is. know. It is. It is. So what do you see for, uh, you've just, you're about, about a year, you'll be about a year soon. What do you see for the future? What do you see for the future of uh, the school district? What are some of the things you want to accomplish? So I think that Amsterdam is a hidden secret, and I think that's why people don't leave. We have generations after generations living in Amsterdam. Um, my vision is to make sure that everybody knows what a great secret it is and not have it be a secret anymore. We have fantastic schools. We have great teachers, we have great families, and to highlight everything that we do, I mean, we have smart scholars. Kids are graduating from, college, from high school with more than 20 credits of college, and yet that's not up there, right? I mean, we have, we truly do care about our children, and if I, the day it's meant for me to leave, I can say that people came to know Amsterdam for the value it has, I've done my job. And that's, uh, and, and this, I did visit the Smart Scholars Program, and it is truly amazing, and it's great yes. that Amsterdam yes. is uh, promoting that program. We talk to the kids, it makes such a difference for them. It is. I mean, this tomorrow we have at the Riverling Center, the art show. I mean, we have talented art students that have won awards. I mean, we do the robotics with RPI in the summer. We do a lot. And yet, um, I, don't th I, I really think that we need to make sure that everybody knows how great we are and, and how wonderful we do take care of, of our children and our families and, and how important education is to us. We have a huge literacy campaign going on. I mean, reading comes first. And, um, and attendance is huge for us. And, and communicating. I, for me, it's two-way communication. It's not good enough for me to say, I left them a message, I talked to them, I want to hear back. I want to have that conversation. I want to make sure that we are listening. No different from what you do, right? You listen to your constituents so that you really know what's going on. And, and that's important. And, and when, we, when we did ride the bus together, we were waiting for a little while uh, for we the were. bus to get there. And the parents, uh, you were having conversations with them. Yeah. So you were... You wanted to know what was happening. How are things going? You know, and I think that's something that's very special for the community to have. Yeah. And you, you're bilingual, so you, you spoke you spoke I, a couple I, languages. I that am, day. I yeah. am, and and you know what? I didn't grow up in on that side of the city, right? Yeah. I, you know, my my home was very humble, and. Um, and if my parents, or if I would have not had those great teachers that believed in our potential, I don't know if I would be where I am today. Um, so it's very important for us never to forget that every person has potential and it's our responsibility to find it and to grow it. That's wonderful, that's wonderful. Well, this, these are, uh, I know you, you have a bright future. Uh, Thank with you. The school district, I know you're doing great things. Uh, look forward to working with you in the Thank years you to come. Thank you for your support. Uh, I look forward yeah. to continuing to work with you and with everybody else. And uh, and it's the reason that we wanted to have you here to it's, honor you. It's an honor. You, it's a great honor. You, I'm humbled. It's you a great had honor. An incredible Thank impact. You. You're making a difference. I hear from the, uh, the staff. I hear I hear from the students. Uh, Thank so you. there's there's uh, uh, I, there's uh, a lot of impact happening. A lot of changes happening. All for the, all for the good. So Thank we're very you. pleased I to have you so. here. And I'm Good ass, to, yes. Thank you so much. And I'm going to uh, recognize you uh, with our citation uh, as an honoree uh, this year as one of our women of distinction. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. There goes again. Okay. Thank you so much. My mommy says.
is, is she watching on is she watching on Facebook? No, we, no, you know what? We'll make sure that we we tape it for her. We'll okay. make sure we do that. Thank you Thank so you much. Let's give her another round of applause. Okay, you guys are still handy, right? Thank you, Dr. Ramos. Uh, and now, okay, our next. Okay, our next honoree, uh, someone who I saw just recently, actually, uh, Aaron Musto is here. Let's welcome her up to the stage. Hello. Aaron, great. I'm, just, I'm just hugging everybody today. I'm a hugger. You know that. We're gonna hook you up here. Cool. Where should I set it? Um, they'll tell you if they if they can't. Oh my God! I just started working out and I can barely. Sorry. Well, w welcome, Aaron. It's great to have you here. And I know we, we've actually seen quite a, quite a bit of each other uh, th the past uh, past month or so. Yeah. We saw you at Mahanase, right? We saw you at Mahanase yeah. doing, uh, I think, was, was it, gar was it gar uh, gardening? or uh, We worked on a, a peace garden with the Mahanase Pinewood School. So um, it's part of our foundation that we do enrichment grants. So we did a peace garden with all the kids. It was great to see you engage with the kids. Uh, and uh, uh, I also we also celebrated uh, we celebrated an anniversary, mm -hmm. uh, the fifth the fifth anniversary of Maddie's Mark Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we get to that, tell us why you formed it, what was the reasoning behind it, and what keeps it going. Um, well, we formed Maddie's Mark Foundation to honor my daughter Madeline, who passed away five and a half years ago from a brainstem tumor, and it, it was our way of grieving and kind of moving forward, but it's also become a way of bringing her along. It, it's, um, it's very much built on the type of person that she was and has kind of morphed into this beautiful way of Madeline, you know, impacting people the way that she impacted people when she was here, but also the way that people took care of us when she was sick and after she passed. So we started Maddie's Mark to do best ever's for kids who are sick, and it has kind of morphed into something that just it supports the community alongside that, so it's very special. And I saw your new, uh, when I was at the event, uh, we saw uh, your new brochure, mm -hmm. uh, and it talked about the best best, day, best days ever, am I saying that right? Best, best day, day ever. Best day yes. ever. I know. Uh, it's a, and where, where did that come from, best day ever? So when Madeline uh, it was young, she was very simple and fun and compassionate, and we traveled home for Christmas. Uh, I'm from Watertown, New York, and we stopped for dinner, and for the first time, we sat together as a family of five, and my kids were really well behaved. Like, they were very young, so they were, you know, five and three and two, and it's hard to go to dinner when they're young. And we had this great dinner, and it, Madeline, I thought that, and then she poked my arm, and she said, best day ever. And I just kind of, it brought me back, back to where I'm supposed to be to, as a mom and, and just in a, in a whole of my life that these are the things that are important, these small things, not those big crazy trips to Disney and those big things that uh, stress you out a lot. And so this is, I, it just reminded me, it grounded me as a mom. And then it kind of prepared me for the next few weeks and all the things that were coming only three months later uh, when Madeline was diagnosed and passed away that it was important to just enjoy our time. And so that's what we, you know, a best day ever is us helping a family enjoy their time in the most simple way for them. So we try to remove the stress. And, and every best day ever looks very different. It's very personal. Um, it could be a yard makeover or a room makeover or a party or a trip. But we always try to include the things that people did for us, a, a professional photographer, um, very personalized keepsakes for people to um, to bring home from a party. Not, you know, the party favor has to be something very special. So that if, if life changes even more for that family, they have a, a sentimental keepsake from that day. So, um, and we've helped a lot of kids in this area you enjoy about, best day ever. So you, you talked about uh, at your at the anniversary. Mm -hmm. You talked about creating uh, something special. Uh, some wanted to know what heaven looked like. Mm -hmm. You had a yeah. Yeah, you, you explained how it was, you weren't sure how you were going to create that. that yeah, day, yeah but, and but, I, you, but you came through. I, I did, and you know, I, I came through partly because I, I honestly don't believe that the ideas come to me because of me. I believe that Madeline and God kind of poke me, and they send the right things my way. 
Um, there's no other way to explain it, but I sat on trying to figure out what heaven could be for Lola for months, and then just things kind of came to me. And, um, you know, all these experiences, and the local businesses here are phenomenal. Like, they are always willing to help us um, create these. I think it's fun for them. Like, they get to, um, you know, Malozzi's helped us with this event, and their cake decorators who are, um, you know, the nieces and, and things, were so amazing with Lola, helping her to decorate this cake. And they, she just got to go crazy in Villa Italia, and who doesn't want that? Um, and so she had this amazing experience, but they all left having an amazing experience too. And for me, I think that's one of the most special things for me, is helping somebody use their gift to help another person. And um, when that happens, that's... And it just reminds me I'm doing my job. So. And you recognized quite a few, uh, you had some, mm -hmm. some recognitions for people that have just donated their time mm -hmm. uh, to the cause. Yeah. Uh, and you had so many supporters there. And your award list was, was very mm -hmm. long because you've had a lot of people involved. This has grown significantly. Yeah, it has. It's, um, it's really, you know, I remember sitting in the beginning and just thinking of names and what, what, um, what our purpose would be and, and how to word our mission so that it covered Madeline and it wasn't something very formal and strict, but something beautiful and creative um, Something that it, it pulls people in and it doesn't you know, it's very inclusive it it's um And it's become even more than that. I, I don't even it's hard to explain I, I never thought that it could grow grow like this and um, and it makes me very proud to get to honor her and all the other kids that you know that get to do this like the families come along with us they just they don't leave and, and that's a great thing it's not a bad thing um they become a part of our family and i think that that's probably the most special part is that um our herd stays along and so. i read some of the personal stories in your brochure and they are very, they're so heartfelt and it brought tears mm -hmm. to my eyes uh but uh you are making a difference yeah you have a, you're having quite an impact um, and so, so five years, five years mm -hmm. now, what do you see for the future? Um, I mean, I see Maddie's Mark growing and in, in sustaining, and I see more people coming on to get to do these things. Um, right now, I'm pretty much, the, I'm, <laughs> I'm the one person that knows all the different pieces, and, um, and that, that's awesome, but it's very hard for me to uh, maintain everything else. And so my goal is to become more organized and maybe um, tack on a few more volunteers to help me with best day ever's and stuff and just keep taking care of communities and, and families that need it and um, working with these families after their children aren't here to help them carry on their children's legacy and, and just reminding people to enjoy their time, to take those small fun family things that are easy and just remember those are actually big those are the ones that i remember from growing up um and just keep sharing that message so that people s slow down in these crazy lives and and just you know go to the park there's some great ones here yeah. go to the you know do the simple stuff don't don't do the crazy and you talk about you know. use picnics you love picnics yeah love picnics, picnics. Yeah. i mean we're diehard picnickers yep. Yep. we're picnicking like the first day that it's above 30 we're out there, but I am from Watertown, and yeah. you know, it's much colder there than it is here. So, but um, you know, it's I see it just growing and hopefully sharing. It's it's kind of my way to parent Madeline, yeah. even though she's not here. You know, yeah. so. and, you, and you had and uh, I know your kids your kids are involved. Mm -hmm. uh, they uh, and I know and I know you do such a great job at the school, and uh, we want to thank you for everything that uh, thank you that you do. Uh, I, this is making such a and when I first heard about this, and we came to your run mm -hmm. uh, as well, so you just keep going. There's one thing yeah. after another. The run's coming up. Actually. Yeah, I do. I do have some great volunteers, so um, I that take on some of those. Our run will actually be planned by a Blue Cross Blue Shield team oh, that's taking on most of that. And, and we just have like the the most amazing people come into our our circle and they stay, and it's become this. I don't know how to explain. It's just this special herd and. Um, I'm, I love the fact that I'm able to connect to people and find places for these people to use their skills. And so. you've certainly done that because the last run, uh, there was, mm -hmm. the yeah. Central Park was full. So, yeah. so you, you got a lot of people were involved. A lot yeah, of we do. We have amazing, it's, it's the best run ever. It's the best run ever. <laughs> and that's, it is something special. Uh, and we're, we're just happy that we could thank you. Uh, and, 
include you in uh, oh, thank you. distinction I'm awards. Very uh, I do have something to share with you before we end. <laughs> uh, and I saved this from the event. This is our, our thumbs up uh, magnet photo. So, oh, uh, that one turned out yeah, good. So it, yeah, it turned out good. So that's, uh, yeah, so you always you do that at every event. So we yeah. have a little magnet. So I, I kept this. Just I love those. We're doing those for our tea party too, so the kids can take them home. So, so that was a good night. We're going to recognize you with uh, our uh, certificate from the State Assembly. Congratulations. Thank you. Very pleased to be able to do this and recognize your good work. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I do it too. I do it too. Thank you. I think there's a. Is there, is there, oh, no. yeah. We'll need oh, that part. Really That's okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Let's give it another round of uh, round of applause. Right. Okay. I'm gonna the, uh, okay. All right. While well, Brendan's doing that, uh, we are going to bring up our next honoree. I don't see her. Betty Harper. Betty Harper. Oh, she is here. Betty Harper. Yes. You were sitting there before. <laughs> Betty, so great to see you. Hello, hello. hello. How are you? Good to have you here. I love being alone. So we're gonna just take put that back together. Yeah. It's good. Okay. We good? So Betty, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. And you brought along some 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 yes, friends I and family did. as well. Yes, so it's I great did. to see yes, them yes, here I as did. well. Thank you. So uh, so um, I know I see you up in the state assembly quite a bit. All the time. You do a great job there. <laughs> you do a great you. job there. But in addition to that, you've been very active in the community. You're doing a lot of things. Uh, yeah, I'm doing less than I used to though. <laughs> but you're but, still okay. you're still doing a lot though. You're I still have doing to. a lot. I can't. Stop. And uh, I want to start off with uh, your your. Uh, uh, you're part of the Mount Olivet Baptist Church. Yes, I and am. You have a wonderful voice that you share. Thank uh, you, you share with, at the services. Uh, uh, tell us about what got you. Where, where does that? Where did that voice come from? How how did you get involved in uh, church singing? You know, I'm not quite sure where the voice came from. I always knew that I was supposed to sing. I tried to make it big when I was younger, but there are a lot of great voices out there, so I didn't quite cut it. So I just decided to stay local. And uh, church is the very first place that, you know, you want to um, show what you have. And I enjoy gospel. I enjoy R&B. I like all music, except country. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a country girl, but, you know, I'm from Alabama, but I have never been able to like that. But I love my church. I joined when I was 16. Uh, I, well, I was brought up as a Methodist. Um, back then, Methodists were very quiet church, and you would fall asleep. And then I... Not uh, this church. Not anymore. No, not this church. <laughs> not anymore. They, they, they've moved yeah. on up a little bit, but... Uh, at the age of 16, I decided to get baptized as a Baptist. And then I strayed for about 30 years while I was trying to be a singer. <laughs> and uh, I came back. One day I just said, uh, it's time to go back to church. And uh, so I love my church. That's wonderful. And, and uh, you, it, nobody falls asleep at Mount Olivet. No. <laughs> so it's, no. It's very active. Everybody Pastor stands. Pastor Sanders <laughs> is not having that. Well, no. He's, he's a great uh, minister, yeah. and, you know, he's the type of minister that you don't fall asleep on his sermon yeah. because he's, he's got it like that. And uh, in, in addition to the state assembly, you yes. are involved with several community activities here. So I don't, I don't, yes. sometimes I don't know how you do it all because <laughs> uh, that takes up a lot of time up there. It uh, does. But then it you read can. and it says you're involved with, the, the, and I've been to this event, Hughes, Hughes Williams Helping Hands Committee, yes. Yes. Uh, which is something. Tell us about that committee and why, why you feel like it's important to be a part of it. Well, the Hughes Williams uh, Helping Hands Committee was formed seven years ago. Um, Hughes Williams, um, rest in peace, was a great community person, but he was undercover. You didn't know that he was doing all these things unless you were a close friend of his. 
so uh, when he became ill, we um, had a fundraiser for him and uh, everyone in Schenectady came out. And it was a great event. When he passed on, uh, we, it was 10 of us. And we thought that we had done so well that we should keep his legacy going. So we named ourselves the Hughes Williams Helping Hands Committee. We are, as I said, there are 10 of us. We're a small group. We do uh, several fundraisers a year. And what we do with that money is we take care of our youth uh, in whatever way we can. We have some uh, high schoolers that go uh, on trips abroad. They need, you know, a few hundred dollars, so we help them out. We make sure our elderly uh, get uh, food, uh, whatever they may need. We take care of them for Christmas, whatever community person comes to us with something we try to help them out and the last event you had quite a few people yeah. supporting it yes. uh, that were there uh, at the, so it, that was our anniversary our yeah. seventh anniversary and yeah. it has grown over the years it has yes. grown yes it has and you yeah. have more community participation mm -hmm. and the students there were some students there yes that you were honoring yes. and uh, boy just outstanding resumes yeah. uh, the students yeah. had uh, yeah so. it was good it's it's always great to help help that's the bottom. Yep. That's the word. Helping hands. Yes. Helping hands. Yes. Well, and, and that's not all. That's not all, though, because you're also involved with the Hamilton Hill Arts Center. Oh, yes. That's June my baby. Juneteenth celebration that we always go to. That's my baby. So that uh, <laughs> yes. tell us about that. You're involved quite a bit with that. Well, um, I became involved with the Arts Center as a volunteer. Uh, and then for a few years, I was on the board. Um, Things have changed some for the better, some for the worse, back to the better, and, uh, but I'll always be a volunteer. So I actually just became involved with Juneteenth in the background part of the, of the event. And then uh, the next thing you know, I was taking on a little bit more responsibility. And then I became the co-chair with Mickey Kahn and so for the last several years, we've had a, a great time celebrating Juneteenth. This year is going to be another great year. We have, uh, we always have great entertainment. We used to do it for two days, uh, but it always falls on uh, Father's Day weekend. So a lot of people have things to do on Father's Day. So it didn't really turn out so well. So I try to incorporate both gospel and R&B on Saturdays now. Uh, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. So we, we have a great time. We got uh, this year, well, you know, I have to thank you, first of all, uh, because you always, whenever I send a message to Mr. Santa Barbara and Nicole, they're right on it. They're right there. So I have to thank you for your participation in helping us with Juneteenth and Hughes Williams Helping Hands We're Committee. Happy to do it. But uh, we're going to have um, a lot of local entertainment this year. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Freddie Ingleton, who used to be uh, with the Delphonics for 15 years. And we are blessed to have him locally now with us. Uh, so we'll have him as one of our uh, hour-long shows with um, the East Coast players AKA Solid Smoke, which everyone knows, I think. <laughs> They're gonna do their thing. And we have another group uh, called the Ill Funk Ensemble. That's quite the lineup. Yeah. Yep. And, and uh, all of our local entertainers yeah. uh, will be there. I did a uh, talent show, Scholastic, uh, the Scholastic Youth Talent Show a couple of weeks ago at uh, the convention center. Um, Mr. Dwayne Bass is over that. It started in, uh, at the Albany Charter School and now has moved to the Convention Center for the last two years. You wouldn't believe the youth, the talented youth. So I grabbed a few of those for us also. It's so. going to be, a, it's going to be some uh, pretty good entertainment yes. there. And I know it's, it's, a, it's in Central Park again, right? Central Park. Yes, so. well, it starts on Friday the 16th at Vail Cemetery yep. where we honor our ancestors. 
and uh, Walter Simpkins from the uh, Fathers, uh, Community Fathers, they will be doing a program and afterwards we have a um, ice cream social that's sponsored by uh, Stewart's Shop. Saturday we start at 1 p.m. at Central Park, park full of vendors, yep. Um, all kind of things going on in the pavilion. We're going to have the Soul Train line. We're going. We have the um, a lot of people there for. We have a health fair, uh, pony rides for the kids. Uh, I mean, it's just going to be another great year. Hopefully, it will not rain. I think last year was good. I don't know. Yeah. Some of the year, days have passed. We have had it had a rain. rain, and I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid. Betty, you put so yeah. much into you put so much into into our community. What do you see for the future? For the future, we just have to continue to stay in prayer. Um, we have to continue to help each other and love each other. I love being around people like you. I mean, I truly do. There's not that many politicians that I can say that. Well, thank you, thank you, Daniel. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is an event about you, not me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sure, show. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I have my loving mother here with me today. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. A round of applause. Yeah. Papa. Hello. I have my sister over there, Bridget. I have my daughter-in-law, Tamu. My son, Adrian. Hello. My my daughter-in-law, Gwanda, in the house. Hello, hello. And all, everyone else out there, I feel as though I know you too. So, hello. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Obviously, there's, there's many things that inspire you uh, to, to do the work that you do. I know part of it is your family. Yes. Um, what else inspires you to, to, to get involved and do and put in the time uh, beyond uh, working your own job and doing your other things? What inspires you to keep going and keep getting involved? Well, you know, Angelo, it's... It's a feeling inside, a warm feeling that you get when you're able to do something worthwhile. And so that keeps me going. Uh, the fact that my children are okay, doing well, are healthy. Uh, my mother is 85 years old and she looks 60. She, <laughs> my mother, my mother mowed her grass until she was almost 80. So I'm hoping that I keep that energy myself, even though I don't think I am. <laughs> but I'm going to sure try. Will. Actually, sure it gives me energy to do the things that I'm able to do. Well, I know we're happy to have you here in our community because you're making a difference. And, uh, have you, and I, I've said this a lot, of, a lot about our honorees. I see you at a lot of places that I'm yes. at. We cross mm -hmm. paths a lot. Uh, and that shows that you're really involved in a lot of, a lot of different things in the mm -hmm. community. And it's making a difference. It's having an impact. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's showing the next generation of and I'm Community waiting for you to ask me to come and sing it one of your... Well, we're going to have to do that. Yes, yeah, she is a great singer. She is a great singer. And uh, the last time, last, uh, yeah, oh, it was happy birthday for Marva. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so yeah, yes. uh, just uh, at any moment, we can ask her to sing and she'll do it. <laughs> well, we're certainly you, uh, proud to recognize you today here uh, as part of this year's honorees for the Women of great. Distinction. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, I did too. I did too. Okay. Thank you, Betty. Thank you. Let's give Betty another round of applause. You guys good? You can hear me? Okay. Thanks, Betty. <laughs> See where I am here. Okay, our next honoree is Shireen Rivera. Let's welcome her up to the stage. Yeah. yeah. Big round of applause. Big round of applause. Yes. Welcome, welcome. So we're going to hook you up right there. Okay. 
Yeah. Is that on right? I think we're good. I think they can hear us. Okay. This set? Yeah. Okay. Oops. Okay. Rain, welcome, welcome to the show, and uh, great to have you as one of our honorees this year. Uh, we first met uh, when you formed something called Raindrops Closet, um, and there's a story behind that. There's a story behind why you did it, yes. um, with, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about what led up to forming it and what, why you keep it going. Okay, um, well, I want to tell you where the name came from yeah. first. Yeah. Raindrop was my nickname in high school. So um, I said if I ever did something, I would name it Raindrops, with an S, it's Raindrops. So Raindrops Closet came from a homeless woman, myself with six children, living in the Days Inn. And um, I started this organization, when I left the Days Inn, I seen other families still struggling the way I did. So I said, all right, we got to do something about this. We got to help other people out there. We know there's other community resources in Schenectady, but not like mine. Mine is a little special. So um, we started up in November of 2015, and um, we started out with a Christmas party at the Emanuel Freedom's Church, and they offered us a location in the church, and we accepted it. So we um, did an interview with Elaine Houston, Channel 13, and that caused a lot of people to start donating to us. So what we do, we um, collect household items, toiletries, uh, bedding, clothing, anything that can help homeless people while they're out there and while they're transitioning into their new place. And uh, we, I, I was there for your grand opening and, yes. and you had quite a few people uh, showed up, but it was nothing compared to the Christmas uh, party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you fit, was that a gymnasium? I don't know where we're, what we were in. I the, think it was. Yeah, it was. But you filled up the entire, yes. and when I got there, you know, I could barely find you. Uh, so the support 2015 to now, uh, okay. the support for Raindrops Closet has, has grown significantly. Yes. Yes, it has. Um, our last Christmas party, you were there. Yep. It, was, yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of people. There were a lot of people. Um, there was a lot of sponsors for the last Christmas party. Um, we had the teachers union. We had uh, the police, the Schenectady Police Department. Yep. Yep. Um, we had Petters. Um, just trying to uh, hotline victims. Um, they supported. Uh, what was that? Um, toys for Tots. Toys, toys for, for Tots. tots they yeah. supported. So we did about over 750 toys for homeless and needy families. Yep. And that was great. Um, that was one of our biggest events that we had. Um, we had our first banquet. We did okay with that. And um, right now we're just looking for donations to continue to help the struggle that is in the community. There's a big need for the homeless families in Schenectady. And I know, uh, <clears throat> I know obviously your story uh, is what led up to this. But what, what inspires you to keep going and to want to want to continue to uh, be be a part of the community this way and find people to help what keeps you going knowing that I was there knowing that I was there and um, just every day you know you see I see people twice a week so when they come and you see that they don't have the stuff that they need and not that I'm looking down because I've been there not having boots when it's cold outside so when people come in and I see z below zero weather and they have on sneakers it breaks my heart so it makes me feel good when I say, hey, take whatever you want, unlimited. They come in, they go, well, what's the limit? There's no limit. Take whatever you want. That's how raindrop closet is. When we, you know, when they come in, we want them to walk out feeling great. You know, it's not about collecting clothing. It's about making people look good, feel good when they leave. Anybody can collect clothes. We thoroughly go through our stuff. So when you walk out of our closet, you're going to look good. So. <laughs> <laughs> it is. If you haven't been, you have to visit. Uh, and what's, what's not, the nicest thing I see is your family is there with you. And that's, yeah. That, and when you open, when you cut the ribbon, family was there. All these events, your family is right there with you. Very tell, supportive. Tell us about, tell us very about supportive. Um, my mother, even when I was homeless, she was very supportive, um, helping me with the kids and, you know, just even when I was going through the stress, I was pregnant with my son. You know, can I be real for a minute? My husband, he went to prison, so I was single mother in a hotel with six kids, and um, that was tough. It was tough. And to have a family that I have that come and get the kids sometimes to give me a break, that would cook sometimes when I needed, you know, needed food, yeah. watch my son when he was a newborn just to go to social service and have to deal with the nonsense down there. You know, it was a lot, but my mother, my sisters, my uncles, my aunts, I couldn't ask for a better family. 
That's wonderful. And I see, yeah. and I see that you're right up here. You're very involved with your family. Oh, yeah. And uh, I know that uh, you've done a lot in the, in the, in the short time that you've been, uh, you've been uh, open. Yeah, uh, almost two years. Almost two years now. Yeah. But well, what do you see for the future? What do you see coming? Okay. I see a big building. I see a restaurant downstairs to feed my homeless yeah. families. I see grant money coming in from the government. I hope so. Okay. Got a lot of applause for that. Okay. <laughs> um, that's what I see. You know, I'm um, feeding homeless families good food, not expired food. Um, giving them clean clothes, not dingy clothes. Great clothes. So when they go look for an apartment, they're not being looked at as a homeless person. They're look, being looked at as a person. Um, going to look for a job they have on a suit like yours yeah. and um, <laughs> um, that's what it's about just if I wouldn't put it on me I'm not gonna put it on you so that's what Raindrops Closet is about it's not about just collecting clothes just to say that Raindrops Closet gives away stuff no we thoroughly go through our stuff so that they can look good and feel good when they leave and that's And, it, and it's so, and it's having such, it is having such an impact because you're making a difference in people's lives. Thank you. Uh, and you hear back from people, but right? once they come uh, and you're able to help them, do they come back and they, they, do you hear back? Do you follow and see what's happened? Yes. Um, even on the interview that Elaine Houston did, uh, yep. three of um, the clients came back and they were, they spoke yep. and they spoke the truth. It wasn't a front. They yep. spoke the truth. Yep. Um, it makes me feel good. I had one lady, she says, you know, just coming in there, seeing you organize, you know, it just really made me feel good. And I'm like, I don't do it to be looked at. I do it to make people feel good and just make sure they got everything they need. Soap, toothpaste, toothbrush, everything that they need as a homeless person. That's the stuff I needed, you know, and, and sometimes it's hard to find. And sometimes when people run out of their benefits, like food stamps and stuff, you know, I want to be able to say, here's a gift card, go get hot food instead of eating a sandwich every day or food stamps because you can't get hot food. So in the future, I, will, I would like to get grants to get gift cards. Again, you know, people work, even though they're homeless, they work, they come back, they have to pay sometimes to live in the hotel if social service knows they have income. So. I want to be able to say, okay, this man came back. He doesn't have anything to eat. City mission is closed. Come over here and get a gift certificate. Go to McDonald's. Go feed your kids. That's what I want to do. And, and yeah, let's give another round of applause. Yeah. You are changing lives. You're making a difference. And we also see that you're involved with, with the chamber as well. The chamber, we saw you. I don't know. There. So you, she, she's involved in all parts <laughs> of the community. Somebody's always taking pictures. I don't we, know. We show up and you're there volunteering. Uh, <laughs> yes, at, yes. At so many events. Uh, EC something over there. Yeah, was, yeah, we saw you at that event. But yeah. uh, that, that, in addition to what you do, yeah. you're also volunteering your time uh -huh. for to help other people and other of causes course. as well. And I work for sick. I mean, I do work. Yep. You know, I have a daughter that has autism, so I don't like to take on a full time. Um, dealing with my six children and having to deal with the organization I keep part-time and that's fine it doesn't make me below anybody or beneath anybody but um, I work for Sikkim in the summertime I've been with them for six years I drive the free lunch trucks and I serve children in the community yep. and we talked about uh, the autism some autism issues as my son yes. as well so we share that in common yes as well. we do and I think that might have been our first meeting actually I think, I think, it think was. that's how we connected that's how we connected we shared that story yes so, yes, well, yes. it's it's uh, it's great to see. I know your work is inspiring others. I know you're Thank changing you. lives. You're having an impact here in Schenectady and maybe even beyond Schenectady. Uh, so yes, yes. We we, uh, we appreciate the work you're doing, and that's why we uh, we included you in this year's uh, honorees uh, for the 2017 Women's Distinction. And I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm very pleased to recognize you and. I just want to quickly say, um, my godparents came up here from Pittsville, so I want to say thank you. And to all my family and friends, thank you so much. I love you guys. Thank you. You had a lot of cell phones go up for, for this picture, so yeah, I did there was a lot of people here. All right, so we're all set? Thank you. Thank all you, right, thank, thank you so you. much. Let's give her another round of applause, everybody. Thanks, Ray. Okay, and uh
We're at the end of our, our program. I do want to uh, offer one more round of applause for all the honorees. And <laughs> if you're, yep. They deserve it. They deserve it. And uh, they, if, you, if you heard the stories, you know uh, that these women are making a difference. Uh, they're involved in their community. Uh, they're having an impact. They're changing people's lives. And that's what these awards are about. Uh, and uh, this group is just a terrific group. Uh, a lot of involvement in the community, a lot of activity, in addition to everything else they, they do, in addition to other work that they do, they're involved and they're always ready to step in uh, if it's gonna benefit the community. That's what makes everybody so special that we heard uh, tonight. So I wanna thank all of you for the work that you're doing. We certainly support it uh, and uh, we're happy that we can include you in this year's uh, list of honorees. Uh, so thank you and congratulations. <laughs> The show, uh, as I said, was live streamed. Uh, it is, uh, I think you can, I don't know if you can replay it on Facebook, but I know you can get it on demand on openstagemedia.org. Uh, but it's gonna be aired on channel 16 throughout the month of June. It's gonna be three times a week, I think twice a day. So you'll be able to see the show. Uh, we'll also try and get out some digital, uh, digital uh, uh, version of the show uh, to your emails as well. So thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Congratulations. It's great to have you here. God bless all of you. Thank you. Thank you.